Okay, uh, so hello everyone, and thanks for attending to this talk. Uh, before my presentation, I would like to say uh, like a big thanks uh, to the staff of this Confidence Online Editions. Uh, everybody knows that uh, this year was very difficult for almost everyone, and I hope that uh, everything is okay for you and your relative in this day. Uh, so here we are, I'm Felix Aimé, I'm with my guest star, Ivan, that you don't see him uh, on the screen. Uh, we are French, we are a member of the great team uh, in Kaspersky, in Spurious Now, and we concentrate ourselves uh, mostly to track and investigate on cybercrime and APT threat actors. And uh, in this context, one of my first research objects uh, was to to find new and innovative ways uh, to do infrastructure investigations. And our talk today is about that, and in particular, the way that we found uh, open source implants C2 on the internet and how we correlated them in Kaspersky today. And just to, to know that uh, this talk is an updated version of what we've presented uh, in SAS 2019 uh, with new heuristics and uh, examples. So uh, this talk uh, talks about implants and uh, tools that are available off the shelves, uh, which means that uh, in the extreme majority, they are open source, uh, such as, for example, Empire or Metaprinter and so on, uh, but also some commercial ones, such as like Cobalt Strike, uh, which are used today by malicious threat actors. And uh, you have a, a little uh, list, which is non-exhaustive on the right, um, and they are used by the threat actors and not only like by red teams or for this famous disclaimer for educational purpose only. Uh, another interesting point with this like implants is that they are developed in high level languages uh, such as Python, PowerShell or almost uh, even Go, which implies that uh, they are dependent of different libraries even on their server side and most of them communicate with default uh, standard port. So in conclusion, not for this talk, but just for this slide, uh, these tools were designed uh, by and for red teamers, but APT Group have also found a good reason uh, to use them. So uh, the first reason uh, is that they are community powered. Uh, these projects are maintained uh, by a huge number of volunteers, uh, which means a workforce that is bigger than more, uh, more ex experiences than most of the players can ever even hope for. And one of the best advantages uh, to use this tool is that uh, they are cost effective. You are like less R&D, no more development for the attackers and everything is available for free and updated with the last like red teaming techniques. And the third advantage uh, that uh, any attacker can see is that they are less discriminant as everyone is using this framework. It's not possible to correlate attack based on the tool set alone, on the malware. Careful attackers are always happy uh, to vanish in the ambient noise. So uh, less discriminant, uh, that's some people's are thinking, is it really the case? Uh, is it really the hand of threat intelligence as we know hits? And for us in, in great, uh, we saw hits, uh, we saw that a few years ago, it was an opportunity. So let me explain that uh, with, uh, with this very small diamond model and kill chain. Uh, they reside, like you have few changes and they reside mainly in the capabilities uh, sections and weaponization sections, but the wall pictures remain the same. The wall intrusion set pictures remain the same. So you can like employ all old uh, correlation trick to buy based, for example, on action and objective or IOCs or anything uh, to correlate uh, these guys, even if they are using open source tools. But like my talk will not be uh, on that, but they, they, it will be only like on uh, infrastructure stuff. So why to look at infrastructure in that talk? Uh, we. We, we investigate on infrastructure uh, first uh, to follow and anticipate attacks. Uh, because uh, you know that attackers need to set up prior and attack uh, their infrastructure. So it's always good to have the infrastructure, all of the domain IPs, everything uh, before that the attacks happens to block them for the, our consumers. 
Uh, moreover, uh, by illuminating an infrastructure clusters, thanks to, for example, specific heuristics discovered, it allows you to, go and to get new IOC easily and not only uh, share uh, with your partners the IOC that you have seen on a specific case. Uh, sometimes also uh, intrusion set can set up their own CTU uh, to accept different type of implants, uh, some open source ones and other completely unmade. So you have like one malicious CTU and you can see thanks to your telemetry of public services uh, which uh, new tool that which connect to it and try to get unknown implants. Uh, it was a case, for example, a uh, few few months ago with the poet rat c2 that was disclosed by by talos uh, the same c2 was used by the same actor as for example a meta printer and a puppy uh, puppy c2 uh, which is an uh, python based implant and the last interesting uh, thing uh, with uh, infrastructure investigation is to do like uh, some victimology as you may know, some attackers are like typo squatting some legit domain or of their target. And it's still interesting to see uh, this like typo squatting. Um, but like I've seen that most of the time uh, done, uh, this done by like US threat teams and it was like a good way to know uh, their customers list. So, uh, we have seen some advantages uh, to discover and to look at the infrastructure, but how to discover it. Uh, so in the next slide, you will see like common anomaly and mistake that you can see on open source C2, but also on uh, like a very uh, private tool C2. So let's go. Uh, the first one and the like most famous one, uh, the most famous uh, mistake in the community is regarding the certificates. Uh, sometimes they are present directly in the repository of the tools and they remain unchanged when the guy de deploy is uh, like C2 on the server. And other time they are generated during the installation of the C2, but with uh, our coded strings. Uh, so there is always a good way to find C2s with them and so you have on that slide a few examples, uh, like for Cobalt Strike, Puppy, uh, Empire, everything, on like open source project. And you can see at the top of this slide the list of the tools, which is non-exhaustive, uh, of like uh, tools that are like vulnerable to that. So moreover, like this, uh, this issue is not only on the listeners, but it can it can be also on the admin port admin panel of these tools. For example, you have some uh, default certificate for Metasploit uh, framework uh, web interface, or for example, for the team server or Cobalt Strike. And so you just have to scan internet on like the specific spot and look at for like the certificate to, to grab some C2s. Uh, the, second, uh, the, 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 the second scene uh, that we see, it's a default and hard-coded uh, artifact. Uh, for example, uh, you, you can see on that slide that you have many different hard-coded stuff. For example, for fishery, uh, which is something to steal uh, NTLM uh, um, ashes, uh, you, you can uh, see on the basic authentication some uh, secure document gateway string that is only for that. Uh, you have also some hard-coded dates. So uh, no, we are not uh, on Wednesday uh, in September 2020 and uh, 12. Uh, so if you scan internet and look at that, you can like, uh, I, I don't see it on my slide, but um, uh, I think it was a, a responder, uh, a responder server and so on. And you can see that many, uh, many stuff are completely uh, art coded. So it's very easy by using, for example, Shodan, Sensi, Sonin for any like internet scanning engine. Uh, to discover uh, this kind of C2 and to track them automatically. Uh, another scene uh, which I love is uh, developers error and fails. Uh, so you have a lot of them. Uh, you have like the infamous hidden space uh, that I've been seen uh, that we tracked like since 2017 or something like that uh, on uh, Cobalt Strike HTTP headers. Uh, you have to note that even if it has been corrected, it's very easy today to track uh, Cobalt Strike C2. Uh, you have also some kinds of no line breaks on some web page. And uh, it was the case also on uh, the fake 
uh, uh, ES uh, page of Empire just because the developers uh, have copy pasted the HTML code and the tabs were converted to space. And which was good is that uh, almost like one month ago, uh, I've seen this, uh, the, the, this pull request uh, just to adjust HTTP listeners of the new version of Cobalt Strike. So uh, please uh, uh, let's uh, let copy it like it's on uh, ES. And uh, they have done the same mistake again. So they have like good tabs uh, for the like in the CSS for the body and container uh, stuff, but for like images, they have still uh, let space. So they they did the same error again, and like the SHA one, uh, the the SHA one or the MD five of this of this page, like is completely different of the legit one. Another uh, another very interesting thing uh, is that uh, all of the decoy web server, uh, the the main problem is that uh, they buzz. Uh, their web server on specific library. And when they try, when the attackers or the developers try to mimic a web server, most of the time it doesn't match uh, the real one. It doesn't match the real one by the signature or even like the hot, uh, order of the HTTP uh, header. So you can easily uh, bust some stuff like that. Uh, so when you are in front of a server which tries, for example, to mimic uh, which tries to mimic uh, an Nginx or an Apache server, you have to look like, for example, directly at the order of the headers in the answer. And you will see that in most of the time, uh, they don't match uh, the legit one. It's, it's very difficult to match the legit one because the server are based on like specific uh, libraries, for example, Flask or Tornado or anything. And they can't uh, move uh, the header uh, from a place to another with this library. So uh, I don't know uh, many internet scanning that are like putting the header, uh, the like the the, uh, the order of this header uh, in their uh, response. But you have uh, Onimp, uh, which is a, an European one uh, that does it pretty well and allows you to track uh, many many implants thanks to that. Uh, the last uh, scene uh, is some uh, protocol issue. Uh, it's not the last scene. Uh, <laughs> uh, the first uh, interesting thing uh, that I've encountered uh, was found on Metapreter that employs always the same uh, Diffie-Hellman prime. So you can also derivate it, uh, for example, in a Suricata rule. Uh, and uh, when it initiates uh, HTTPS connection. And I found the same uh, quite recently uh, with um, SSF uh, servers, uh, which were used uh, on a case by Moody Water Kittens uh, during like direction and objective to tunnel something. And uh, they, this, uh, this kind of tools has, have also is uh, is on uh, a prime uh, number for like default configuration. And you can see also some protocol anomalies. Uh, another famous one is uh, with Cobalt Strike. Uh, when you, uh, you ask for a Cobalt Strike C2 via DNS, uh, some uh, TXT uh, record and in it answer like um, a, a record. So it's quite interesting. Here also you can uh, scan internet to, to find some Cobalt Strike uh, servers. <clears throat> and let's finish uh, by uh, the last scenes is like malware in answers. So uh, for example, you have my interpreter listener can have some of them in, uh, in their answer just by searching, uh, for example, default uh, P those headers uh, by using, for example, Shodan. Uh, you can get many metapreter C2 events if they are like some uh, fault positive to checks, but most of them are uh, like metapreter C2s. And uh, we have seen that also with Puppy and sometimes with Cold Strike, and it's uh, something to note, but uh, on specific URLs. So uh, now that we have seen how to hand for C2, let's see how to create them.
Ivan? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. So basically, uh, the question is here, what are we hunting for? And the threat intelligence community has uh, a tendency to focus purely on technical aspects. Well, because obviously this is uh, what is most obvious to us. But the thing is, uh, it should not be forgotten that uh, however sophisticated campaigns can get, they are still operated by humans. And uh, most of the actors that uh, we've seen um, uh, are not hacking computers for the sake of it, uh, whether they are financially motivated or uh, APT actors conducting espionage, they have strong incentives to be as efficient as possible uh, at their job. And so smaller groups are going to want to reduce their overhead as much as possible uh, because they want to focus their limited resources on whatever maximizes their expected profits. Uh, but large groups, possibly composed of different teams and or interchangeable people, are difficult to coordinate unless they establish reproducible processes. Uh, I do not imagine that such organizations are run differently than large software companies. So the idea here is that if Alice calls in sick, uh, then Bob must be able to take over. Uh, and this in turn implies that there are um, single documented ways to do things. And a great example of this is um, a document that was leaked uh, by um, uh, WikiLeaks in a, a big leak called Bolt 7. And the document was called Development Tradecraft Do's and Don'ts, uh, in which are described the standard guidelines for how to write software used in operations. Uh, once they have been uh, leaked or reconstructed by security analysts, these guidelines become a sort of signature or maybe even a matrix that can be used for attribution purposes. And while we do not have examples of such documents for an attacker uh, building infrastructure, I'm willing to bet that one exists somewhere. I mean, isn't that obvious? Uh, it looks like a boring job with a lot of boxes to check, like reliability of the provider, responses to abuse requests, anonymous payments, uh, etc. And so taking some time to think about these constraints can help the hunting efforts significantly. So an example of such a pattern would be uh, buying multiple servers in the same AS, the provider for the email address used to create the account, uh, the configuration being deployed exactly the same because uh, of provisioning scripts like Ansible uh, or stuff like this. And so as established in the previous slide, uh, attackers, uh, they have strong incentives to automate C2 setup through provisioning scripts because uh, this is going to make uh, their uh, efforts reproducible, uh, even if they have to change employees or replace people. Uh, but those scripts, of course, might set up servers in a way that are going to make them very unique. So uh, how we are looking for uh, when we try to, uh, uh, to do some uh, infrastructure uh, clusterization. First, uh, we will look at the other just because they don't change like for each campaign, uh, for each attack, every registrars and hosters, everything. Uh, so we are looking for obviously autonomous system and IP ranges because they they register like some VPS by clusters. So uh, sometimes uh, most of the C2 are in the same IP ranges. Uh, you, you have to look also on DNS records associated to the domains. Uh, for example, the name server, of course, but also the, the TXT record or state of authority or any like DNS record that can, uh, can uh, allow you to grab some info uh, on the context. Um, moreover, you have to, to look at the domain pattern. Uh, why are like strings in domains or the kind of domains that is pointing on the IP address? It can be like a uh, dynamic DNS uh, domain or like a glue DNS or something like that. And moreover, the last thing is to look at like setup states. Uh, why? Just because you have uh, sometimes uh, the attackers like register uh, their infrastructure uh, on the same day and they wait after like for one month, they, they use it for one month and they they use another batch of infrastructure for the next campaign. So set updates are quite interesting also for like clusterization. And how about the config? Uh, so what we are looking for, uh, we are looking for port, port status on the C2, uh, for example, if the port is closed, opened, filtered, everything. Uh, of course, also the services uh, where the where they are listening on, and for for example, there are version two, uh, the operating systems, uh, some hints, and we will see uh, that later of port forwarding. It can be, for example, e tags. It can be uh, 
even the window size, the size of the the the, well, the, the TCP protocol. Uh, sometimes you have the window size that change from a port to another on the same orb, and it can be a hint of port forwarding. Uh, and you have also some protocols answer that are very, very interesting to look on. So how to create, uh, how together uh, in, in grades, uh, I've created a, a private tool during the summer that uh, I named uh, Infragen. It's a kind of funny because it's like Igen, Igen Kaspersky. Uh, <laughs> I'm the only one to, to, to smile at, at, at that joke. Uh, but um, it's uh, it has been developed uh, to uh, to the for answering to the needs of infrastructure clustering of the team, and uh, I, if we show it today, it's not like to release it, uh, but to present some examples of infrastructure correlation uh, based of on the shelf implant C2 and like some ergonomic tricks uh, that can be used uh, for this kind of correlations. So uh, let's start with a, a small example, uh, a, a recent one, a recent one. It was like one year ago when I, I was investigating on a Ryuk cluster. And it was like uh, how to burn a Ryuk cobalt strike infrastructure just in three clicks. So here uh, you, you, have the, you have a paper, a technical paper by uh, VMware Cap Carbon Black, and this one presents a kind of incidence response based on real case uh, with some reverse in, uh, analysis of the ransomware itself. And in the IOC section, you have like a domain names. Uh, let's copy paste it in Infragen. So uh, it takes some time um, to see the scan report of the domain. And to do, as you can see, uh, it's a Cobalt Strike C2, which used glue DNS records. It's the C, uh, GDNS tags. So let's correlate it. I want all of the Cobalt Strike in the same autonomous system, which are using uh, glue DNS records. And like, let's encrypt certificates. Uh, let's wait a few seconds because like my server is completely crappy. And boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so, sorry, I'm very, uh, I have a, a shitty server. <laughs> I'm gonna have to accelerate the video, maybe. Up. And tada, we have all of the, the Cobalt Strike that have like the same configuration and associated uh, to uh, this DNS stress actor. Maybe not the first one, uh, but most of the of most of them are associated to uh, this uh, like real uh, cluster. Yeah. So the next one uh, it's an, like an APT uh, example. Uh, it's an APT that I uh, temporarily call Dropy uh, because it used like Dropbox. Uh, to, to, to drop uh, some metapreter during their operation. And I call this type of actor like the missing uh, APT threat actor just because they use only red teaming techniques uh, and implants to compromise like, for example, uh, governmental networks or international entities. So like nobody is looking at them, even if it works. Um, and uh, since they never uh, get clusters based on their tools, no real name is given to them. So let's look at it. Uh, we have, uh, so sorry, uh, we have on that slide, so uh, a, a small graph view of two scan of the same uh, server, which is uh, a simple uh, metapreter stager. So let's go to one of the scans. And uh, you will see if you are like very uh, careful that uh, the server uh, answer an uh, APG2 uh, Ubuntu generic page, but in each HTTP header, you can see an Nginx one. So it can be a hint, for example, of port forwarding. And it's like very discriminant to have such kind of stuff on, for example, Metapreter server. So let's, let's look at it by selecting just the body and uh, the HTTP header value. And of course, that we want Metasquat stager. 
Oh, I switched to block and here we are. We have like a lot of the infrastructure that have been already scanned because it was like uh, meta operator stages. So uh, in order to handle all of the stuff I've created, like, you know, environment, several application in grade. Uh, the first one uh, is a kind of crone, uh, which requests like different kind of APs. It can be like completely unmade APs or from uh, public services in order to, to do some heuristics rules <coughs> to track automatically uh, the infrastructures. Uh, it can be, uh, or it can be for moves of some of them or implant everything. And each update are recited uh, to the analyst uh, by an encrypted image and all of the hope that have been discovered are automatically tagged uh, in or passive DNS database. And of course, this new IP, this new server uh, are directly scanned uh, by InfraGen uh, for like future creation. So uh, in conclusion, uh, our first uh, conclusions will be like, who is correlation is dead, but like, don't worry, uh, we are in 2020. It means that, okay, uh, GDPR is uh, here now, but you can't really only on contextual stuff such, such as who is and attackers know, and they are very careful about it now anyway, name server or re registrar to create uh, the infrastructure. You have new methods that exist and uh, they have been proved as, as you have seen on the battlefield. Of course, all of this type of C2 anomalies and correlation methods can be still used by many APT infrastructure clusters and a small portion of them, I will not see it, but uh, I think that it's, uh, it's, uh, it, uh, you, you see it on the right uh, and like you can, uh, you can use it for uh, different APT and you have a, a list of uh, on the right of few of them and you have like Bentley or other that, that are like vulnerable to this kind of creation. Um, uh, why like still be used just because uh, some APT have started to mutate by using, for example, new C2 methods, new C2 protocol, or like TCP level whitelisting, domain fronting, and even SIGINs. And uh, if they are the best of the bunch or like the helit one, uh, they can rely on SIGINs, not only to do like reconnaissance phases, prior and intrusion, but also to communicate with their implants. For example, it's the case with Turla, and uh, we, we think that uh, other of them are using SIGINs actively uh, during their operation. And of course, uh, by using SIGINs, like this elite actor can also do some money on the side attacks, allowing them to interact uh, with some malware already present and implanted on the targeted networks. And as of today, uh, we have some suspicion, maybe it will be the, the uh, a, a new uh, new conference topic, but uh, we have some suspicions uh, of such behavior, uh, which seems to have been used where some implant uh, seems to have been used to deploy so some more sophisticated implant in the targeted networks. But that's another story for like another conference. So okay, uh, this is a hand of the conference. <coughs> Uh, if you have any question, just feel free uh, to, to ask them uh, now or after by email or Twitter. I think that we have our Twitter there uh, by using private message. Uh, if you want some rules, I can also provide them. And thanks a lot. Thanks for like the staff, uh, the staff of this conference. And uh, we, we're going to uh, give the mic to them. Thank you.